What is up guys, Evil Do Arm here today, and today I have for you a video where we're going to be looking at how I farm my upgrade materials. So I'm going to show you how I farm all three of the main upgrade materials in this game. Soulstone Crystals, Moonstone Crystals, and Elysian Crystals. Um, we're going to start off right now with my general farming method. So if I don't have any one of them that I need in particular, if I'm not trying to farm Moonstones or trying to farm Elysians or whatever, I'm running Shattered Mast Solo. Shattered Mast Solo, you're going to need about 100,000 DPS to make it not painful. Um, I mean, you could probably solo at around 80,000 DPS if you're perfectly clean all the way through. Um, but this is a higher level sort of farming thing. You're going to need a good amount of DPS to go ahead and get into one of these suckers and run it and clear it solo by yourself. But um, basically, all you do is you run the dungeon on solo. It's going to take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, uh, depending on your AP and all that good stuff. I mean, it's not a hard dungeon to, to beat on its own. I kind of iframed a little bit too far right there. So anyway, after you go ahead and complete the boss here, I mean, he's going to go into his chi restoration state. But basically, the reason we're farming Shattered Mass is because... Uh, it's got a high drop rate on treasure pouches, so it drops about four or five treasure pouches per run. Each run, like I said, takes about 10 minutes, um, so you're looking at about 20 treasure pouches an hour running this boss. Um, treasure pouches, I, I believe I went over this a while ago, uh, they drop Elysians and Moonstones at about 35% rate, and you're basically going to get a Soulstone Crystal per pouch that you open. So you're looking at a decent uh, spread of material farming for uh, how much time you put into this. You know, it gives you a good spread, a good variety of materials. Um, it's pretty easy to do solo. You can listen to some music. You can hang out. Um, first day, time that you run it on the day, you're going to go ahead and pick up about four gold for running the dungeon. So it's not too bad, too, if you just want to run it once a day for the treasure pouches, soloing it. Um, another thing to point out on it is that it does have the chance to drop that awful, and that awful does go for a good amount of money, so you can go ahead and pick up a little bit of cash if you ever do get lucky running this dungeon. Um, I mean, you're never going to see too much, uh, too much craziness here. So, ooh, man, I got the pirate cop captain outfit, even better. So, once again, treasure pouch times three, and Naryu tablet in there, some uh, captain outfit, that's pretty cool. I haven't actually seen that one in a long time. How's it look on my character? Eh, it looks okay. I kind of like the black one better. But anyway, um... So, yeah, I got four treasure pouches there, and then if we go ahead and claim our daily reward challenge on it, and the uh, box as well, the box reward on this sucker, um, we can see we can go ahead and pick up a few more uh, treasure pouches if you get lucky on your split here. So that box didn't have any, and the Shattered Magic Rewards chest uh, also did not have any, but that one does have a chance to drop a uh, treasure pouch as well. So once again, I got four treasure pouches for that run, four to five pouches per run, ten minutes per run. Um, 10, 15 minutes, you're looking at about 20 pouches, 25 pouches an hour running it this route. So not too bad at all as far as farming is concerned for treasure pouches, and treasure pouches have a pretty good uh, spread all over. So the next one we're going to look at is Moonstone Farming. Alright, for Moonstone Farming, the tried and true place, as everybody knows, is going to be Mushin's Tower 15th floor. This place is the best Moonstone Farm in the game. I cannot think of a better one unless you're like a super geared character running 6v6. Otherwise, you are not going to farm Moonstones any faster than you will farm them in Mushin's Tower, floors 13 to 15. To run this sucker, you're going to need Mushin's Flower uh, 13th floor tickets, which I totally forgot to loot that boss right there because I'm recording a video and didn't pay attention. But that first boss always drops them, or just about always drops a uh, 13th floor ticket, so make sure you loot that first boss there. Next boss is also super easy. I mean, he's just going to go around. Uh, he swings a little bit, shoots some rockets. He goes up like this, just iframe it when he comes down. And you can knock him out pretty quickly as well. I mean, I'm doing stupid amounts of DPS too, so that's helping. But anyway, bosses. this boss right here has a chance to drop a Moonstone. So if you go ahead and pick up the Moonstone from him, unfortunately I didn't get one, so I can't show it off. But he has a chance to drop a Moonstone, um, which is pretty cool uh, for how much you're going to be killing him. He also drops Sacred Orbs, which you can go ahead and sell in the marketplace for a gold to pop. So a uh, nice little bonus cash right there as well if he drops those. Um, anyway, the final boss on the Mushin uh, floor is 15th floor is Naxxin, actually, uh, contrary to the name of it. Um, so Naxxin is also another super easy boss to beat, um, at this point in the game anyway. He uh, has a couple different phases, which I'm going to skip all of them, so this definitely isn't a guide. But basically when he drinks, just go ahead and iframe. I missed my iframe there. Um, every other drink after that, you're going to go ahead and stun him. Then he's going to go into an ice phase and blah, 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 blah. But uh, we've killed him long before any of that. So right there, you saw that took about 45 seconds to clear that floor, all of that. I mean, you're going to spend more time in loading screens killing Naxxon than you will. So once again, Moonstone Crystal, he drops one every time. Uh, you can probably run this about 20 times an hour if you're really pushing it. Um, like that, most people probably about 5 minutes to make a floor run, so you're looking at about 12 runs an hour, so 12 moonstones an hour, definitely worth the money there, I mean that's 60 gold of moonstones an hour, so if you only need moonstones, Naxxon farming is your best bet. Um, next one we're going to talk about are Elysian Crystals, so I will see you there. 
All right, and so the next thing we're going to look at for uh, farming the uh, orbs here is the Elysian Crystal. And the Elysian Crystal, or Elysian Orb, is most easily farmed from Ebendrake Citadel. Um, Ebendrake Citadel is the boss you see right here. Um, this boss is Zakan, and I'm hoping I get the Frost Sheath, and I do. Um, anyway, so uh, Zakan and uh, Desolate Tomb and uh, Naryu Foundry and Naryu Sanctum, all three of them have pretty good odds for dropping... Uh, Elysian orbs at the end of the dungeon and the uh, reward chest. You also get the reward items for completing the dungeon. Um, so it's best to put together a little party of your friends. So you see I have three friends here right here from the Discord. Um, they are all helping me run this little video right here. But anyway, um, get together a little party, split the chest between your friends uh, so you all get some extra materials along the way, and then hope for the Elysian orb drops. Elysian orbs also drop on the Mushin's Tower 15th floor. Uh, Naxon has a chance to drop them as well, so you can farm those along the way. However, if you're looking solely for Elysian orbs or Elysian crystals and all that, um, Ebendrake Citadel is going to be the way to go. Um, anyway, so you can see right here, we got some decent drops. We got Losing Treasure Promise Chest, and I'll give them to the guys for helping me out here. But, uh, any oh, apparently they're giving them to me. But anyway, um, yeah, so Elysian Orbs, Elysian Crystals come from the reward chest at the end of the dungeon, this one right here. Uh, so let's go ahead and open it. Can't because my inventory is full. That's depressing. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and claim these reward chests and see what we get from it. So the chest that has the chance to drop the Elysian Orb is this one right here, the Phantom Captain's Treasure Normal. So we go ahead and open that sucker up. Uh, we will see we did not get an Elysian Orb, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, so that is the way you farm him, is from running Ebendrake Citadel, um, run that to get the Elysian Orb drop, and uh, yeah, that is your best bet for farming Elysian Orbs, as well as you're always going to get a Lucent Promise Treasure Chest, which also has a chance at the Elysian Crystals um, as a bonus round there. So anyway, guys, those are Elysian Orbs. Next thing we're going to look at is the uh, Soul Stones, farming Soul Stones, so I uh, will see you there. Alright, and the uh, last place, the place to farm soul stones is Soulstone Plains, of course. Why else, what else would I pick for farming soul stones, right? Um, place that has soul stones right in its name. So, Soulstone Plains, I have a full on guide about it uh, on my channel, but um, basically it involves being a part of the uh, primary winning faction here and then farming up and killing mobs. So, as you can see, each mob here has a little uh, icon above their name. So, these guys are worth one prestige apiece, and you basically farm up as much prestige as you can. Uh, by killing the mobs in the area. Um, so right now you see I have 11 prestige. Um, farming more prestige will allow you to trade in for more items. So once again, I'm running around with uh, Buddy Biscuit here, farming up mobs, trying to uh, pick up some experience here as fast as possible. Generally though, um, you want to sit in the middle here and wait for those mobs to come running in. That one right there actually that's coming right now. So uh, we're going to go ahead and jump in and try and get some damage in on it before it dies. The big guys here, these big ones, have the most experience or the most pointage per kill that they drop. Um, 265, as you can see on this guy here, so we're trying to burn him off quickly. Um, you only get the prestige if you're looking at the guy when he dies, so make sure, you know, when he dies, you're looking at him, so you get that bonus prestige is right there. Um, so yeah, you see right there, picked up uh, 90, I think, prestige points right there. Um, yeah, so I'm up to 106 right now, uh, and you can see your maximum prestige points that you can earn. So you can see I max out at 300 prestige points. Um, at uh, yeah, so basically, kill mobs in the area that have prestige icons above their head. You're gonna go ahead and get prestige points. When you get a certain number of prestige points, you're gonna head over to the faction exchange merchants. Faction exchange merchants are located here. They're also located right here if your team has won the mining phase. Um, so as you can see right here, I have a faction merchant, and just to show you the prices here of everything, basically what you're looking to exchange for are these uh, Sky Petal Soulstone chests. As you can see, they have 80 to 100 Soulstones and 80 to 100 Soulstone Crystals, plus chances at 100 Soulstone Crystal Bundles, 100 Soulstone Bundles. I mean, crazy amounts of stuff. You just got to pick up 500 points, um, which is going to take you quite a bit of while. Also, the 300 pointer isn't too bad either, um, and even the 100 isn't uh, terrible. I mean, 10 to 15 Soulstones at the current price of Soulstones, that's still about 5 gold seven and a half gold and as you saw right there that took me about four and a half seconds to pick up all that um, if you are trying to pick up more more soul stone or more pr prestige points you can see you can pick up one of these soul stone planes points prestige charms here for five prestige points it increases your maximum prestige points by 300 percent so if i was to pick one of those up i would jump up to a maximum of i think 1200 prestige points um, that i could go ahead and farm up in addition to picking up soul stones in this area you can also pick up uh, different items from these chests so faction insignias um, on weekends, if you run this, you have a chance to pick up, uh, what is it called, Moonstones. You can actually get full-on Moonstones from finding these Moonstones and Evolved Stones um, drop from these chests. So it's actually a pretty decent place. The problem is on weekends, it is packed. 
um, so like absolutely packed in this area. So you're going to be doing a lot of farming if you want to uh, go ahead and uh, pick up these items. But anyway guys, Soulstones Plains is the final place to go ahead and pick up farming materials. So as you can see, that is where I farm my materials. I farm Moonstones at Naxon, I farm Elysian Crystals, Elysian Orbs by running uh, Shattered Mass, as well as um, the dungeons, Evendrake Citadel, Desolate Tomb, Naryu Foundry, and uh, Naryu Sanctum, which is why I have those in my rotation every week, that, or every day that I run, as you saw in my video, the last video I put up. Um, so those four for Elysian Orbs and Elysian Crystals, and then Soulstone Plains, of course, to rack up massive amounts of Soulstones. But anyway, guys, that is basically it. Um, those are the three places that I farm my materials. Those are the best three places to farm your materials in the game that you need to upgrade your weapons. So if you did like the video, make sure to leave a like. If you uh, want to see more stuff like this, you know, leave comments in the comment section. And check out some of the other stuff on the channel. Got a lot of great content, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.